My granddaddy was a pimp, my uncle was a pimp, so it's been pimping since been pimping since been pimping. Do you have concerns about his sexuality? I do because the man don't even touch me. The man does not even touch me. He don't even let me go on him. That's how bad it is. Finally, she pulls the window down, and so I'm asking her what's going on. She says, I know my place. And drives, they drive off. Her kids are there. So now I realize he, he helped taking care of a prostitute's kids. Oh, come on. You got to put the games down. You cannot afford strip clubs. You just can't. Make me go in there and look, but don't make it rain. Uh, uh... <laughs> well, you're uh, here, which is good. You're not going to be together anymore. No. No, I'm good. Typically, at this point, just I say dog. something intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you know, I got nothing today. <laughs> Divorce court revolves around couples and their problems. Whether two people are in a relationship about to break or are one step away from divorce, the court is here to help them with what they need to do. So welcome back to The Filmy, and today we're going to take a look at only a few of the craziest cases we saw on the show. I had got a text message one, one night cooking chicken, of course, doing my wifely duties. Doing my wifely duties, I'm in there cooking him a meal. I get a text on Facebook saying, this is what your man's doing. Saying something about, oh, he's texting me. And Natalie and Larry came to the court in hopes that Judge Lynn would help them fix their relationship. They were close to marriage, but because of some hiccups, they were not sure if that was the right thing to do. Natalie was the first one to share her concerns with the court. He tell him he video chatted me while your daughter is in the background, and of course I confront him on, you know, why mm -hmm. she's telling me this. Oh, I didn't do it, and um, she's lying, and she's a friend, and okay, why she screenshot me, y'all text me, y'all recently texting way before she even screenshotted me this. Besides his alleged texting with some women, Natalie claimed he had a thing with her sister. I invited her to come stay in my house for a week or two. She called me like, well, sis, I need somewhere to stay. I said, okay, you could come crash on my blow up bed for a couple weeks. She get there, they get too comfortable. Oh, bruh, bruh, loud, come and let me, um, come walk to the stove with me, or um, let's go to um, get some singles from the cigarette, man. We got a whole pack of cigarettes. What you need to walk to the cigarette, man, for? The judge didn't buy that story or the evidence of Larry's texting that Natalie brought for the judge to see. I look at these, and all of this is you cursing at the girl about talking to him. There's nothing in between him and the girl. Thank this you. is just you acting a fool. Okay. Acting a his, no, ain't no acting. His oh. ex girlfriend, she shouldn't have been so comfortable with. They had to have been talking from the get go anyway, because why is she bringing up stuff that we've talked about? Then she claimed Larry was flirting with some girl in the restaurant. The restaurant, I was at the restaurant, and I sent him in line to go order the food. Me and my daughter took a seat. I look over three minutes later, he hugging up with some girl. So I go over, I say, well, why is y'all hugging? Who is she? Oh, this is my sister. Now, that's the, the code they use for, you know, when they trying to get together. Larry denied that he ever cheated on her, but Natalie had one more story to tell. I hop on Snapchat. He's at the strip club. Did she catch you at the strip club on Snapchat? Throwing walls like it ain't You know, nothing. back in the day when I was doing something, I didn't document it. Now, the judge didn't buy any of Natalie's stories, and it was Larry's turn to say what he had to say. Recently, she had done some crazy things, like she was texting a dude on the on a dating website, and the guy had sent me the pictures of her, you know, said like it was literally her. And, you know, she denied it at first, but then, you know, clearly I could see that's you. And that was not all, folks. I understand that she cost you a job but yes. with her jealousy. Why don't you explain that to me? Because I, I, I want to... Yes, sir, she's a stalker, first of all. She comes to my job, she cuts out the manager, she thought I was sleeping with the manager, and she just caused me to lose my job. Like, that was a good job I had. I was making, like, I think 13, 50 an hour. Natalie and her stories failed. She simply didn't have enough proof that something was happening. But we know she was messy because she admitted to all those things. Did you go up there, cuss out his manager, and cause him to lose his job? Yes, I did. He gives me the reason to do the things I do. Don't tell me lies. Somewhat understandably, Larry was cautious with Natalie and what she was doing. Ms. Robinson says that you control what she wears, you try to put her in sweatpants and suits, and you also give her a smell Man, test. Okay when she comes home. Is that what's happening? Yes, ma'am. Now, we are all curious about that smell check. The smell check is like, you know, I smell around the neck. You know, make sure she'll smell all manly. Make sure she'll smell, you know, she'll smell musty. Or now, you know, you, you can smell a guy. It's a difference between guys and females. Uh -huh. The judge also looked into their compatibility tests. He spends the money on the wrong things. 
I asked him to go pay the Georgia Power bill, which was $75. He took the money and bought a game system. Larry did confirm those claims. Do you make it rain in the strip club? Yes, I do. At $13.50 an hour, how much precipitation can you cause? <laughs> All in all, they mostly have communication problems except for those hilarious things. In the end, the judge shared her thoughts on all of that. I think you're a good couple, but I think there's a couple of things that you have to work on. First of all, Ms. Robin, he's not going to make you feel good about yourself. You have to decide to feel good about yourself on your own. Oh, no. She's just an assistant pimp. This is one of my role dogs. She know how I've been getting down. Danielle and Michael have some bumps in their marriage, and Danielle wants the judge to bring Michael back to the ground and tell him to grow up. So let's hear what she had to say. My husband Michael is a liar, a cheater. The worst part of it all is he has a fascination with prostitutes. Your Honor, can I say something? In a minute. As the judge was fascinated with that information, so were we. Go ahead, tell me about the, tell me about the fascination with prostitutes, because I'm by that fascination. Yeah, he's, 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 he's had homeless ones. He's had, uh, yeah, yeah, homeless ones. He finds them on the street. And Danielle mentions one of the last adventures Michael had. I found out because we were having a birthday party for one of my kids, and he said, I gotta go real quick. I gotta go pick up this girl's kid. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For everything to be even better, Michael allegedly made one of the prostitutes pregnant. Seven weeks after that happened, she's pregnant. pregnant. By him. Prostitute, pregnant, to eat. What did Michael have to say to all of that? He probably denied those claims, right? I come from a family full of pimps. My granddaddy was a pimp, my uncle was a pimp, so it's been pimping since been pimping since been pimping. <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time. Michael did claim that he got money from his pimping, and Danielle disagreed. She wasn't sweating me when the money was coming through. You know, see, that's the thing she was telling y'all. What? I gave you then the judge asked the question that was left to linger in the air. Did you get the other woman pregnant? Who? The one she was just talking about, the one she chased you in a car. When? I'm not sure if I got her pregnant because it could have been a lot of other people. And then the judge pulled another essential question for Michael. You said, yeah, I think I got this prostitute pregnant. <laughs> you're having unprotected sex First of all, with women that. that you think are out and about making money doing that. Michael's side of the story when they came to the court was that Danielle was paranoid and irrational. And how could that be? It's not like he's, I don't know, dating prostitutes? Anyway, the judge wanted to hear a story about Danielle's paranoia. I'm talking to the girl and, and I just feel some presence, like like a, a like a, a energy yeah. on my back. Uh -huh. So I turn around and I see a silhouette of her looking like the grudge. Then we learned that Michael cheated with his best friend's sister. So I tell my son, give me me the code to dad's phone. Oh, it's a full threat. It's a threat, threat, threat. It's I love you, all this stuff. Come find out he is cheating with his best friend's sister. <laughs> Michael wouldn't do that. It's not possible. I ain't got a lot to say on that one because I was messing with my friend's sister, but she's my best friend's sister too. <laughs> what a surprise. Now these two were a walking mess and the judge had some final thoughts. I don't want another one of you loose in the community. So I can keep you together. I've done, I've done my part for America. So tell me what it is I can get her to do for you. Stop drinking. As their relationship was coming to an end, Billy and Maria went to court to resolve some things. You see, Billy wanted Maria to stop pole dancing. I am here today, Judge, because she doesn't refuse to stop dancing in the pole, and I am done with that. Oh, she's a pole dancer? Yeah. And of course, Maria had other thoughts about the real problem. About the today. real truth we're here today is because I don't know whether this man likes women, men, or both. I can even oh, talk I don't about know one about time. All that, no, Judge, because we're in Los Angeles, I'm sorry. and she thinks sorry, that every Honor, woman looks like a man. Dark. Maria didn't have any evidence on her that day, but she demonstrated what she found suspicious. I don't have any pictures with me today. Today, your honor but there's a certain pose that he sent me on my cell phone after getting out of the gym this is how he was posing and she confirmed she knew he was texting some other women he was inside that bathroom texting yes thank you very much he was in we're not sure about his sexuality now we know that he's chasing women yes so maria claimed billy was texting women but she was questioning his sexuality what's up with that do you have concerns about his sexuality I do because the man don't even touch me. The man does not even touch me. He don't even let me go my 
him. That's how bad it is. So what was actually going on here? Oh, man. You don't know what he is. He don't know where you were. I don't know what he is. I don't know what I'm doing. going to have. Maria also claimed that Billy makes her insecure and ugly. You better believe it. He makes me feel insecure and ugly, telling me I got to go get a tummy tug, that my boobs are not big enough for him, obviously. I'm a 34 double D, but that's not enough for him. Now, Billy said that he does tell her those things, but explain why he did it. She thinks she's better than everybody, and then she sees somebody, oh, I got to get my stomach flat, or I got to get bigger boobs. I got so annoyed to the point that I keep hearing this every day. I had to tell her, yeah, go get this, go get that. So I really got sick of it. Okay, anyway, Billy then got to say the next problem he had with Maria, and that was her relationship relationship with her family. Any family member comes visit, comes first, she, she'll always put me to the side. When we go to the family to go see her family, and she talks so bad about me that her mom don't like me, disrespects me. Maria, of course, had an explanation. My family has given them a chance, but they don't like them because of the same thing. Because I do tell my mom everything she is, and when he don't want to touch this, then I got to tell her. I got to tell somebody. And why are you going to tell your mom all that? Then Billy said how Maria is stealing money from him. She claimed he was stealing from her. Did you take he his $500? Even, he don't even know. No, I did not take his $500. Of course, I she's not going to admit I it to it. This man, he's more like a pimp, all right? He takes my money. Now, if the previous couple was a walking mess, these two are sprinting. The judge then got to the next problem. One of the major issues you two have, among the many, <laughs> you have differing religious beliefs. He makes fun of my religion. He'd be like, you praying to the same. Well, after some more screaming and cursing in the court, the judge was ready to close up the case. Y'all were on the internet, messing around. You saw my show and said, hey, that woman looks like she's having too good of a day. <laughs> so, what do you think about these cases? Let us know down in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to never miss an upload. And of course, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.